bring this markup. Uh, I apologize for not being here yesterday. Somebody did a study here some years ago. I think it's gotten worse. We're supposed to be at two places at the same time, at the, at the same time over half the time. I think it's probably three. But I wanted to make some remarks. Um, last week, the AASA, the School Superintendents Association, 49 state superintendent uh, associations, including the United School Administrators of Kansas, wrote in a joint letter supporting ESEA reauthorization. The current ESEA expired more than seven years ago, meaning that our nation's K-6 graders have spent every day of their K-12 experience to date under what some may consider to be an outdated and broken ESEA. Our students want and deserve more. Now think about that for a minute. I believe it perfectly summarizes the issue at hand. Unfortunately, over the last few years, the administration has doubled down on federal mandates and has used this waiver process to create law by fiat, thereby circumventing Congress and allowing those have, who have a real federal agenda in Washington to make decisions that I think are best left to states and local uh, districts, certainly at least by option. It is evident that waivers have been granted only to those states that agree to implement uh, the administration's preferred education's policies. In fact, the New York Times has referred to the waiver process as the most sweeping use of executive authority to rewrite federal education law since Washington expanded its involvement in education in the 1960s. As a member of this committee, I am fully committed to fighting this one-size-fits-all one federal education agenda because I firmly believe that local control is best control when it comes to education. I am supporting the legislation in its current form because of many things, but because it, in, it puts an end to Washington mandates and allows Kansans to make their own decisions, and for that matter, every other state, about the best way to improve education. While this legislation heads in the right direction in reducing the federal footprint, I want to remind my colleagues I think it is very important that we avoid adding back in federal mandates and very uh, prescriptive requirements. As we move forward, I will continue to push to return the K-12 education decision-making to state and local control where I think we can establish the best policies to ensure that every child receives the highest quality education. Now, in homes across America, Parents are raising questions about what their children are being taught. In many cases, parents are hearing that local curriculum decisions have been driven by the Common Core education standards that most states adopt in a hurry under federal pressure with little or no public input. Decisions about what children are taught are made best on the local level as close to parents as possible, but the federal government should not have an overriding influence, an overriding influence over state and local education decisions. Unfortunately, in recent years, I do not think this has been the case. Simply put, the Department of Education has incentivized and coerced states into implementing Common Core education standards. Some within our educational community in Kansas have even called this practice a bribe, strong words indeed. The administration has made it a criteria for states to adopt uh, Common Core standards to have a reasonable chance to receive federal funding under the Million Dollar Race to the Top program and use federal funds to develop Common Core aligned tests. They have also threatened to withhold waivers, the infamous waiver situation, from onerous provisions of No Child Left Behind if states do not adopt a Common Core or simply or pardon me, similarly aligned standards and assessments. For that reason, earlier I, I reintroduced the Local Level Act S-182 to explicitly prohibit the federal government's role and involvement in Common Core. My legislation would strictly forbid the federal government from intervening in the state's education standards, its curricula, and assessments through the use of incentives, mandates, grants, waivers or any form of any manipulation. I am very pleased that Senators Grassley, Portman, Inhofe, Rubio, Paul, Cassidy, 
uh, Capito and Ernst are the co-sponsors of this legislation. I mean, it's coming. Simply put, my legislation will preserve state education autonomy. A state will now be free, if they so choose, from federal interference and in how to decide whether or not to use Common Core or any other type of academic standard. I want to thank the chairman for including my language in the bill before us today because I firmly believe it will prohibit the administration from finding additional ways to promote a state's adoption of Common Core. I want to emphasize that setting high standards for our schools, our teachers, our children, is precisely the right thing to do. But we will decide those standards in Kansas. We need to get the federal government out of the classroom and return our community decisions back to where they belong, and that is in the uh, community. I thank the chair for including uh, this legislation in the market. 